so yeah. today I'm working on a gesso board by Ampersand, 16 by 20 inch cradled. Um, as you can see, I've put some the first layer down. So what I've done is just put some green gold and quinacridone nicolazzo gold in the golden fluid acrylic paints. Um, and I just basically sprayed it with water and then just laid down some of the acrylics, just moved them around with my finger. Um, I didn't want it to get super muddy, so I just kept the colors separate and they just blended into each other slightly on the edges, which was lovely. Then I placed the plastic that the gesso board came in. So when your canvas or gesso board is, is wrapped in, a, in the pl plastic, I keep that. And then if I want to make some texture, I just lay it on top of the wet paint, just squiggle it up a little bit and let it dry. So you must make it dry, otherwise when you take it off, you'll just pull the, the paint off and, and lose, you'll still have some effect, but you'll lose a lot of the texture. So today I'm taking off the plastic. Okay, let's see what we end up with. Oh, I love doing this, such, such a beautiful effect. It's still a little, little bit wet, but I, I'm impatient and I couldn't wait any longer, so. And that's been drying all night, so that's amazing. Some of the, just the thicker bits are still a bit wet, so I'll have to leave this to dry, but isn't that gorgeous? So I'm wanting to do a nature-themed abstract on this one using oil and cold wax. So I thought I would make the most of my acrylics and start off with a beautiful textured background. Now admittedly, a lot of this will be covered up. Now I just want to show you something. You can see on this plastic how there's still quite a bit of paint and marks on there. You could very easily cut bits of that out and use it as collage on a painting. Um, it's quite beautiful. So I'm actually going to keep that piece. And just let it dry but yeah so as I was saying I've got this beautiful abstract acrylic background now you can put oils over the top of acrylics but you can't go acrylics over the top of oils so this is my base layer I'll let it dry for a bit longer and then when it's dry I'm going to pick some colors and do a fairly neutral palette but what I'm hoping to do is to be able to scrape through some of that oil and cold wax and show some of this beautiful texture and color underneath. So I might even do some trees or abstract trees, just some abstract plants. Um, haven't quite decided yet, but I'm really happy with the beginnings of this. So I'll return when this is lovely and dry. Okay, so here you can see me using a woody pencil um, I've totally changed what I was going to do. No more oil and cold wax. I've fallen in love with the background and decided I'm going to make it more an abstract type of nature themed painting um, using those straight lines as abstract trees. So I'm putting a bit of texture on the trees. Um, yeah, that's what happens when you have a plan and you do a background that you, you really like. Fatal error. Next time I'll do a planar background when I'm doing oil and cold wax over the top. But um, so yeah, getting some black and brown texture on the abstract trees here. Just doing wiggly lines just to give a sense of colour and just to give them a bit of green now going on for some of the leaf type shapes. Okay, so now I'm working on the flowering gum using, uh, I can't think of the name of those pens. Um, no, sorry, I can't think of it. Anyway, so I'm using a red pen there. Uh, it's an ink pen. Um, and just getting some outlines for the flowering gum. Sort of, I saw some little circles in different places on the on the background so all my flowering gum is out at the moment so yeah I, I love these flowers they're an Australian native flower um, so just putting the centers into the middle of the flowering gum flowers 
And now going in with the black ink pen. I'll get the name of it. <laughs> It'll come to me. Something writer, I think it is anyway. So yeah, getting some of this. Um, what I'm thinking of, of doing at this point is having a, a post bushfire sort of theme. And I think I'm going to call this painting Renewal. So still having the, the black and charcoal trees and branches, but then showing some signs of new life, such as in the flower and gum, and probably going to add a few little animals in as well later on. Um, but yeah, just working on getting this black charcoal sort of effect on the, on the abstract trees at this point. This pen's really interesting. Um, it, it looks really beautiful when it's sprayed with water and I think will make a, a really nice look on these abstract trees. So what I'm doing now, I've got some gum leaves that I got from my morning walk and I've got three shades of green there, two, two greens and a yellow I think it was, um, using a small roller um, and just dabbing the leaves in the paint or rolling the paint onto the leaves and then pressing them onto the painting, sort of like a leaf stamp if you will. Um, and it leaves some beautiful texture and uh, the shapes of the, the gum leaves there. Yeah, my motto is you just can't have enough texture, as you can see. I, sometimes I think my paintings get a bit busy, but um, I love them that way. So that's what's important. Do what you love. So, yeah, just finding some, some different spots to press these leaves onto. Sometimes I'll pop the deli paper over the top and just roll the brayer over the top to give a bit more pressure. Um, you can see the beautiful shapes coming and some of that lovely texture that the paint's leaving behind. So rolling it on. And you can use any colour when you do this. I just did the green because obviously the leaves are green but it also fits in with the background. I didn't want to get too many colours going on. Okay, so you can press the leaf into the paint or just use the roller to. It's, it's nice using some different colours that break it up a bit as well. Okay, so here, along the same theme, I'm using some Grevillea flowers that haven't flowered yet, just the ones with the buds. I'm dipping them in magenta um, paint. It's, it's actually Matisse paint, magenta. Um, because when the flowers do come out in flower, they are a beautiful, ready magenta colour. So this is just putting some, some of those shapes on. Now what I'm doing is spraying water just to bring out the effects of that Elegant Writer. That's the pens that I used, Elegant Writer, for the flowering gum, the red flowering gum and the black on the trees. Um, so I'm just spraying a bit of water just to try and get a bit of that effect. Now what I didn't think of was spraying the water would also make the flowering gum ink run, which it did. But that's okay. I'm just going back over that again, trying again with the Elegant Writer. Um, as you can see, it's fairly faint. Um, and I will change it up a bit in a minute when I realise that it's not quite as, as bright and detailed as I wanted. But I'm persisting, <laughs> persevering. With the elegant writer every now and then it sort of gives a, a burst of ink but um then what i'm doing is using a fine liner and coming in to use that and bring out some of the details and make some finer lines so that fine liner i'm using there is just perfect for that job it's 
while I why I'm using the water is that it's also setting it um, so that if I go over the top again with anything it won't run so once you've covered the elegant rider with water it is set so as you can see on those abstract tree shapes they've got a beautiful sort of blacky blue sort of hue and some different textures and shapes so the elegant rider worked beautifully on that okay so now i'm using the faber castell pit artist pens now i have a magenta and a deep scarlet red so i'm just going to try that just get a few darker magentas in deep scarlet red. more like what I was looking for. Back to the magenta. Red. So ones I've got out the front are very vivid red. And then the other tree, it's a beautiful pink. Okay, okay this time I've got Faber-Castell Pit Artist Pen Earth Green. Um, what I'm going to do is just outline some of these gum leaves with this pen. And just put some ink in there and just move it around. So I don't want the full, I want to keep the texture that I put there, but just fill in those. Can you see me over here? So again, keeping keeping what I put down with the texture from the leaf, but just giving it a bit more presence. Some beautiful textures down there with those leaves. Still can't quite get that one. Doesn't want to go over that paint. It's okay. All right. Leave that there. Okay. This one here. It's like glazing, you just get a glaze of the colour that you're still able to fully see. It's just transparent and leaves what's underneath. It's beautiful. Okay, there's another one. Is that colour? Beautiful. Really effective. I like this. Okay. One over here. Let's 
See that, I don't know if you can see all that beautiful texture that the leaves left. I know I've pressed them on before, really pretty. Okay, so here what I'm doing is just adding um, some ultramarine blue, very watered down, just to try and unite some of the colours a bit. It's just looking too green and then too orange. Um, and because I'm going for the bushfire theme, I didn't... I wanted it to look a bit more, I wanted to knock the colour back a bit. So what I've done is just used a, a paper towel just to dab it over and give a bit of a unified colour. All right, so now what am I doing? I'm going in over the Grevillea with a fine liner and the fine liner has some gold paint mixed with water in it. And I'm just using that to give a bit more colour and interest to those Grevillea shapes. And now I'm adding some charcoal powder to the tree shapes um, using a, a pastel soft tool um, and charcoal, actual charcoal powder. I'm just rubbing it over all the branches and tree shapes just to give it a bit more of that post bushfire feeling. Uh, it's very effective, the charcoal powder, and in some places, if it got too dark, I just rubbed it back a bit with some paper towel. And who knows, at the end I might bring it back again and add a bit more. So, yeah, it's just sort of put some on, take some off until you're happy with it. But it worked quite well for the job, so. And that soft tool was perfect. You could put it on its side for the narrower areas. So as you can see, I've just blocked the little koala in using um, a white and black charcoal pencil just to see if I could get these yellow wattle dots covered over. I think I can, so I'm just going to come in with a bit of alcohol, um, rubbing alcohol just on a, a brush just to get that pastel Set in there so I can come in and go over that again. So I'll just put a bit on the ear here, just cover those yellow dots up a bit. These ones. I wasn't expecting to put a koala here, otherwise I wouldn't have put the yellow dots there. I like to do the animals in the pastel because they sort of seem to blend in with the background a bit better than if I'd done them in, a, in acrylic where I find they stick out a bit more. It's just, I really like to do this with some of the mixed media pieces, the pastel animals. I think they just have a different texture and just a different outcome. Let me just put a bit of this alcohol on here. I don't want to dip my brush with alcohol back into the container. So. Just getting that charcoal to sit a bit better there. Yeah, I think that's going to go really nicely. So all I did was just block in some colours with the, with the charcoal. I'm obviously going to come back in now and go over that again. I just wanted to see if it was going to look any good. I could easily remove the charcoal with some water if it didn't but I'm pretty happy with that got pretty good coverage over those yellow spots uh, let me have a look here okay so we've got a bit of koala coming under here just go over that black spot there Okay, 
Okay, that's looking pretty good. A little bit more here. dry and then I'll come in and finish the koala okay so the alcohol is dried and now I'm ready to do the koala I've got a few supplies in front of me here um, hopefully you can see them okay okay so I've got these holders which are really great for holding these sticks these are Koh Noor um, titanium white and ivory black sticks um, they're supposed to be very good for getting the blacks and the whites in. I've also still got the black and white charcoal pencil ready to use. And I've brought in some um, Prismacolor New Pastels. So I've got a few shades of grey here um, and some very pale yellows because there's some shades of yellow in the fur and just a, a darker yellow just to bring that in, just to put a few little highlights in. Um, so I'm going to start on the, on the little koala and I, I'm not going to make this a, a photorealistic koala. I just want to get some strokes in just to put him in place and have him sort of, because of it's the pastel, just to sort of go into the background a little bit more. So um, I might just grab a dark blue in the new pastels. Um, because there's always a shade of blue in the nose, so. Just trying to see what's under his nose there. Oh, it's his fingers, okay.
because I had only the existing colors and the ampersand board behind the koala, um, I'm running out of texture to put some more, lay down some more pastel for some details. Um, I'm going to try some of my Neo Color 2s just to see if they make any difference. The good thing about the Neo Pastel 2s is I've used them before and when you spray the fixative, what happens is it maintains the darks and you lose your whites and your light tones. Um, and at times I've had to like go over animals. I remember going over ko koala like five or six times before in between sprays of fixative. So um, to cut a long story short, I actually did a green tree frog where I used Neo Color 2s and when I sprayed the fixative, kept the lights beautifully. So I thought I'll give this a try and let's see how we go. Okay, so I wanna get some more, actually I wanna get a little bit of dark in here. Okay, that's going on quite well. Now let's try for the white. Okay, not too bad. Now, some definition on this forehead. Okay, so I've added some white flannel flowers. I used a stencil that I cut myself with the Cricut machine from one of my flannel flannel flower photos. <laughs> Try and say that quickly. Um, so what I'm going to do now is just use some of these Faber-Castell Pit Artist pens just to add a little bit of color to these flannel flowers. They're technically white um, and a very sort of furry flower. Uh, I'm just looking at my photo. So all I'm going to do is just add a few little bits of colour to the tips. Good thing about the pit artist pens is you can put them on and then sort of spread the colour and glaze it. That's a little bit a little more of a bit of a yellow or green I think. No, that's too green. Try this one. Yep, yeah, that's not too bad. Okay, 
just going to add this to all the tips. So I shall speed it up from here so you haven't got to <laughs> watch me doing that. Actually, you know what, I'll, I think I'll turn it off while I do the rest of it because it's pretty boring. So that's all I'm doing for this. So I'm just adding the vein that goes through the middle of the flower. It's very faint. So let me show you, where can I see? Uh, I'm just going to do it very faintly. I'm just putting a few drops and then running my finger along. Yeah, it's just enough to give you the hint of that vein. These pens are perfect for that job. Okay, I'll keep going, but I'll turn it off here so you haven't got to watch the whole thing. Okay, so in the center, I'm just drawing some squiggly green lines, blotting that out, and just adding a touch of yellow. This is a light yellow glaze, and then just dotting that out as well. Now, this little bud here has more of a yellow, so I'm putting the cream on here. And that actually goes quite nicely. And I think I'll add a bit of that in here as well. going to add a bit of medium skin. Oh, that's bright. Okay, that's a bit too... Uh, I have to find a bit more of a brownie, light brownie one for that. I did not use a grey, actually. Okay, so today I'm starting the red tail black cockatoo and the colours that I have starting here are in Atelier Interactive Paints, Tinting White, Titanium White, Cadmium Red Light Scarlet, Pyrrole Red, Red Black, Brown Black, Burnt Umber, Raw Umber, Australian Ghost Gum in a Matisse paint and Naples Yellow in an Ara paint. So what I'm going to do is to just block in this black red tail black cockatoo and then start to do some details. But I'll speed it up from here so that you're not sitting here for ages because I'll I'm just going to work slowly because it's so such fine work and such fine detail. So I'll speed it up from here and 
hopefully you'll enjoy seeing this cockatoo come to life.
So here's the finished painting. It's called Renewal um, and I had lots of fun and lots of challenges painting it. Um, yeah, I was, as I said in the beginning, I was starting off planning to do an oil and cold wax painting, but um, the background got to me and I'm so glad it did because I'm extremely happy with how it turned out. So what I've got on it is the the background with the um, abstract trees and shapes and texture. I've added some gum leaf shapes. I've added some grevillea shapes. I've added with a fine liner some wattle in yellow, um, abstract wattle. I've added some flowering gum. And lastly, the koala, the red-tailed black cockatoo and the kookaburra all beautiful Australian animals and all animals that hopefully do recover after the bushfires have gone through and renew and have families and babies and keep the cycle of life going. So that was the thoughts behind the painting. Um, I hope you've enjoyed the process and thank you for watching. If you like, please hit subscribe and thumbs up and hope to see you next time. Thank you.